Hey guys, here today with another Shirogorov knife. Today we have in front of us the Techno Bamboo. Now, uh, this is one of the very first collaborations with Dmitry Sinkovich that uh, Sergei Shirogorov had done. In fact, this knife dates all the way back to 2013. So uh, quite an er early piece in uh, Shirogorov. Uh, recent Shirogorov history uh, ever since he started moving away from the axis lock system and into uh, the frame lock flipper type knives that he is so well known for today. But uh, the history behind this, this, this knife came out uh, in 2013, I want to say uh, the later half of that year. There were 10 pieces made, of which this is one of them. And uh, I believe there were two variations of the knife, uh, at least that I've seen. Um, these knives are incredibly rare, uh, and because they're so old, they pretty much kind of fall into where uh, they apparently will be permanently now. Um, this one right here, you can see, has uh, additional kind of line milling on the handle here, both on the uh, front and the back. Uh, there had I've seen pictures of a version without these line milling here. There could potentially be more variations. Unfortunately, there's just so much little info. There's so little information out on these knives. It's, it's really hard to get a complete picture. So I'm going to try to do my best, especially since uh, this piece again is is quite hard to come by. Now, let's first start and take a look at a comparison to other Shirov knives. Uh, you can see here that the Techno Bamboo is a little bit smaller than the F95 here. And it kind of falls in that medium size range um, where the Stellar actually might be. Actually, I wonder if I can get my Stellar. We can see here that it falls into a very similar size range as the Stellar here. Taking a look at the actual measurements of the knife. <clears throat> we are looking at just over three and a half inches, between three and a half and three and three quarters inches for cutting length and just over eight inches open. Closed, we are looking at around four and a half inches. Let's take a look at the weight here. So just under five ounces. So a little bit on the heavier side for its weight. Um, nothing too crazy, however. Um, but it weighs about the same as an F95. Compare that to the Zero, or sorry, the Stellar. And you can see it's around 4.3 uh, ounces. So in its size range, um, a little bit heavier, but uh, we'll talk about that later on, on why I think why that is. Now, <clears throat> As you can see here, we have a beautiful complex grind here on this blade. Now the steel is Vanax 35, which is, uh, I believe an earlier variant of Vanax 37 Super Clean um, that we most commonly see now. Uh, Vanax 35, I believe, has been all but discontinued. So this kind of, again, ties back to the the age of this knife, uh, just the era at which it came out. You can see here that we have a very refined uh, belt satin finish type here. Um, something that you, you very don't see, you very un uncommon to see on knives these days from the workshop is, uh, is this belt satin finish. Um, Sergei and, and Dimitri as well, they really tend to uh, finish their, their grinds. But back in the day, um, there, there were knives where we had this type of finish on it that uh, came just right off the grinder. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that this isn't a very well-executed uh, sand finish. You can see it's all unidirectional here. Very nice. 
the blade itself also has um, what Sergio refers to as the compound grind. Um, we have this uh, initial uh, wide flat here with the secondary grind underneath it. You can see both of the plunge grinds here. And of course, in true uh, Dimitri fashion, we have a very interesting swedge here up top uh, with multiple drops to the blade here. So a very nice and futuristic um, kind of sheep's foot blade profile here. We also have this little dip here, similar to what we see with Sabenza's uh, sorry, the the Inkosis and um, other Chris Reeve knives. I think right here it's just completely aesthetic, perhaps maybe to serve as an index point for your finger to let you know that the uh, jipping is ended, since on, I believe, the Chris Reeve knives, uh, this kind of marks the transition between the rounded blade spine and the jipping, but uh, different maker here. So I'm really not too sure what this kind of indent is for, but um, honestly, I don't hate it. The jimping here is the old style kind of production jimping on the knives. I think it's uh, completely functional. I uh, really love the, the bite that this knife has. If you take a look here on the actual flats in front of the pivot, you can see here that we have satin finishing. So something similar to what we see on the custom divisions and uh, a nice change of pace from the belt satin on the blade. Um, since so little of it is uh, exposed here, especially with the satin finish, the belt satin on the actual primary bevels of the knives, it's a little bit hard to catch that. Uh, but there is that little, that little touch of satin finishing there. Moving on to the handles. Now the handles are what really make this knife incredibly complex, um, multi-piece construction here out of titanium. Um, let's first start from the back, actually. The back is actually uh, what I would consider kind of an integral type design. Uh, you can see here that there is no gap on the back. Uh, it, the, this rear piece serves as its own backspacer here, as one solid chunk of titanium that has been milled out. You can see there's a groove here, uh, just to kind of accentuate um, the blade grind, uh, really. Uh, when you compare it to newer knives, such as the Neon Zero, uh, here I think it serves to kind of accentuate the blade centering, but there is quite a gap here. So I think it's just to uh, kind of complement the blade grind here. As you can see, the V shape into the rear of the backspacer is of similar, uh, similar shape. Very nice contouring here. As you can see, it kind of flares out a little bit here and then recontours, kind, kind of similar to what you might see in a Loxa, but uh, and of course not to the same degree, but there is um, contouring on multiple facets of this knife, both on the sides and on the top here and the bottom. Now, moving back here, you can see our first pivot. You can see three lines here and this line here that demarks which setting the knife is on. Now this knife basically uh, is allowed to pivot in multiple directions here. The, these screws uh, are, you're able to loosen them and basically readjust the angle as you see fit. Now I actually have, I don't have the tool here, but I have one that I was able to uh, make. And if you just give me a second here, I uh, should be able to loosen the screw for you. Okay. And then you can see the handle then can adjust ever so slightly. Despite how slight these angles look, they do definitely change the feel of the knife in the hand. I personally like the angle uh, on its most uh, downward setting. However, as you can see here, we kind of get this hot spot that forms because of the, uh, the handle back here. So despite uh, this angle being one of my favorites, um, it definitely does start to create a hot spot. 
when you start to change it, um, this middle angle is also nice as well. Not as nice as all the way down for me, but those are my hands. And um, I really, I think this is, this knife is excellent in, in the sense that uh, you have this kind of slight adjustability. Now underneath here is actually uh, three detent holes um, combined with uh, a ball detent on this middle portion right here, which we'll talk about. Uh, let me go ahead and snug up these screws. We can go ahead and talk about the front portions of the knife. Uh, there are actually four pieces, so two on each side. And we have a bottom half and a top half of the front portion of the knife. The top portions uh, slide in here and you can see provide the threaded inserts for the screws here. You, you also have this nice blue anodized titanium standoff here to kind of spread them apart against the integral uh, back portion of the knife. And then uh, on top, underneath the screw, you can see here is the bottom portion that runs all the way to the pivot area. Very, very interesting sandwich design. If we take a look here, you can actually see all three of those layers here. We have the, the top portion, which is the bottom part, and then we have the backspacer or the back part in the middle. And then underneath that is the top portion, which runs all the way through the bottom here. Also have the stop pin here. This knife is a front flipper type design. Honestly, not, I'm not the best at this front flipper design. Uh, not the best front flipper I've handled uh, in terms of the execution of the flipper tab, but it is quite minimal. Uh, it is quite unique and I can still flip it, uh, especially on video when it counts the most. Uh, going over to the front pivot area here, you can see we have similar screws. The pivot of this knife is actually quite interesting. Uh, something that I've actually never read before uh, until uh, I was able to take a look at the inside. The knife has uh, Sinkovich style MRBS so uh, the pivots are, or the bearings are arranged in kind of this uh, V type pattern. Sinkovich himself calls it the Mickey Mouse type pattern. And it is a distinctly different from the Shiro Grove, which is more of like a, a spiral uh, out, uh, kind of arrangement. The bushing, this knife also has a bushing, a phosphor bronze bushing that uh, is press fit into the blade. Now, because the knife has bearings, uh, it also has steel underlays uh, protecting the titanium from the steel ball bearings. I believe the only purpose of the pivot uh, bushing is to provide some kind of lubricity for the knife when the blade is you know, opening and closing. And this knife is indeed very smooth. I wouldn't say it's any smoother than other Shiro Grove knives, but I think it's a, a very nice uh, unique feature of the blade and it would be nice to see that in other knives as well. I don't know why I've never seen another Shirogorov knife or Sinkovich knife with that design. Um, I, I would think that because that, you know, for these Sinkovich collaborations, the design is 100% Dimitri. Uh, it's just produced by Sergei and his workshop that it perhaps may be a feature of earlier Sinkovich knives, but overall I found that to be the most uh, interesting aspect of this knife, especially since, um, you know, very few people have seen inside these. Overall, very interesting knife here. Oh, last thing I wanna talk about here, you can see we have a lock bar insert that's secured by two screws, um, something that is very unique uh, for both makers. Um, I've never, I think this just kinda of adds to the whole uh, techno bamboo kind of uh, appeal uh, and the design language here. You can see it's a very futuristic uh, design, especially this version here with the lines here really evokes some kind of uh, futuristic technical uh, design. Now, a lot of people wonder why Techno Bamboo. If you take a look at the knife vertically, you can see uh, the shapes and the contours are kind of reminiscent of uh, a bamboo stalk. The blade as well has a very uh, kind of organic curve to it, and I think plays really well with the whole bamboo uh, type design or, and bamboo type theme. That's pretty much the reason behind it. Techno, futuristic, bamboo type for bamboo design. 
this knife, one other thing I want to talk about as well, since uh, I have done a video on uh, Snex, uh, this is really the knife that kind of inspired him. I believe I read this correctly, uh, if I remember correctly as well. Um, this was one of his grill knives, and uh, here we look long and hard to get one of these to, to really tear it down and see what made it tick. So this knife, very famous in Shirogaruf history, not much known about it, but it has gone to uh, inspire uh, other makers, uh, some of which we still see today. So really excited to be able to get this one here finally. Um, it's kind of starting to round out my collection of the Citus collaborations, and uh, this one is most definitely uh, one of the harder ones to track down. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time.